All right, guys, welcome back to the Disconnect Podcast. I'm Will Rodolfi with our hosts, Mark and Annie Pratt as well. And then we have a special guest today, Hillary Taylor, new addition to our team here at New. And she is going to be helping us and leading us on our Charging Forward initiative um, with everything that we're doing with megawatt charging and infrastructure needs for this entire EV industry and electrification going forward. Let's go. So we're talking about, obviously, we have a new direction where we're going here and new, very charging forward, as you guys um, like to say, I like it a lot. And with that, we have an excellent, amazing, outstanding addition to our team in Hillary Taylor, who is joining us uh, from Spark Charge was your last one, yes. technically. Yes. We don't want to mm-hmm. go with the, the one that was after that, yeah. but let's just not even... They who shall not be named. They shall not be named. But yeah. Ooh, we got to talk about that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we do actually. We can. We yep. can if we if Hillary would like to. But Hillary, tell us a little bit about you. One everything around your engineering, charging, mm-hmm. what interests you in this space and also what interested you in joining our team here on the charging forward. Yeah, yeah. So, uh born and raised in McAllen, Texas. I'm a Latina. <laughs> Went to Georgia Tech for my undergrad, graduated with a degree in electrical engineering and dove right in from the very start uh, in electric vehicle charging. So my first gig was at Whitricity and that was a really, really cool job because it allowed me to live outside of the United States. I hadn't even taken a plane before college and jumped straight into maneuvering with different OEMs and, and tier ones in Asia. So did stints in Japan, China, South Korea. Whoa. Set me up. That's cool. Re- well traveled. Yeah. <laughs> Set me up really well just because I had worked with, at that point, a ton of different engineering teams with a ton of different ways of working together. Set me really well up for my next skip gig, which was a leadership role at Spark Charge. So I headed up engineering there, continuing making progress in EV charging, just a little bit of a different technology in that it was um, something that was producible at, and not a technology that was licensed like it was at Whitricity. Um, and got really, really good manufacturing experience. So I feel like um, in the span of my career, I got a really holistic view of the development process. And now I'm here. How long? Week and in, w- week one. Why charging? I <laughs> mean, I mean, that's a good. That's a good question. So I think you know, to be honest, I didn't know too much about electric vehicles. I don't think anybody did. It's me. I don't think anybody did ten years ago. Right? It was still a very slow moving market, but I think everyone was in mm-hmm. agreement that we were going to get there. We just didn't know how, right? Uh, I jumped in at Whitricity. They kind of hooked me because it was wireless charging of electric vehicles, right? Mm -hmm. So it just seemed really innovative, like very futuristic. And I still think that uh, we could end up, you know, wireless charging electric vehicles, but the technology was a little bit more removed from being a producible product, right? So I got the intro to electric vehicles what was the application 10 oh. years ago for wireless charging? <laughs> the application? Electric vehicles. Okay. Yeah. and it But was, like what electric vehicles? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, okay, the car I worked on that has launched the market right now is the GV60 from Genesis. Genesis. Oh. Yeah, okay. yeah. So that is equipped Hyundai with- Hyundai's luxury brand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the idea yep. is that wireless charging won't necessarily be at first. Um, and I, I'm not sure I can see it coming to fruition in high power, but at first it's going to be low power and will substitute out your um, wall charger in what's your garage. The, what's the kilowatts? Like I think the highest I've seen is like 19 or yeah, what's so the highest? Oh, 90, 90 plus. Oh, <laughs> yeah. that's, oh, wow. Yeah, but it's so, I mean, from my time there, it's very expensive because there are a lot of safety systems that Mm -hmm. go along with it that don't come along with the traditional plug-in, right? So it's a magnetic field. Mm -hmm. You need to be able to detect detect certain material and um, living objects. So there are two- In between the two pieces. In between the two pieces, especially if you're charging at a distance, which is what- I was gonna say, what is the the, like distance that you have to be within for that to be feasible? So it is proportional to the size of the ground pad. So the bigger the ground pad and the bigger the receive coil on top of, or I'm sorry, underneath the chassis of the car, the larger the distance you can transmit power. Okay. What happens when your cat walks in between? Yeah, that's that's a really good question. And that's, um, you know, the use case actually that came up a lot. So Kitty has a collar. Don't tell me you killed cats. 
<laughs> no, no animals were harmed, <laughs> luckily, um, while I was Thank there. Um, but yeah, Kitty comes between the charging pad because it's warm, uh-huh. it's transferring power, but it has a collar that has metal in it. Oh. How do you detect that, right? Um, the cat won't necessarily by itself be harmed because the magnetic waves are operating at a frequency that doesn't interact with the human body, especially in the short time. Okay. But what about the collar? Or what if there is yeah, like some metal. sort of metal? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How do you detect that? And how do you detect it over a distance? So that was one of the big hurdles was developing the safety systems. But it also made the technology pretty pricey. So, so if we're reeling it back here uh, <laughs> to wireless charging, a um, lot of like different things going on in the industry. Tesla just acquired a wirelessly charging company. Mm -hmm. Um, There's now like asphalt that they're saying that's like highly conductive with electricity and might be like a serious application for Mm -hmm. like creating an HOV lane that's strictly EV. I love the eye roll because I I know, I know, I know that he is ready. He is ready to just read it real quick and then lay it down. Like there's no tomorrow. And yeah, when I read it too, I thought it was a bunch of hooey. But from someone who comes from the wireless charging industry, how feasible do you believe this is going to be <laughs> for uh, this kind of an industry? Mark, yeah. hold your horses. <laughs> so, I'm already dead. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if we're talking about uh, streets lined with wireless charging, I don't think that's very feasible. Just do you, do you remember a startup that did like these little panels, like octagon panels that they yeah. were called mm-hmm. road? Mm -hmm. They were at CES one year that we were also there. There was a uh, CES has periodically um, like focused in on wireless charging over the years. And yes, I remember them. Isn't Qualcomm's a big investor Mm -hmm. in wireless charging? Not anymore. No. So Qualcomm Halo was the division. They were sprinkled all over the world. There were divisions because yes, they were really heavily invested, but Whitricity acquired Qualcomm Halo. Mm. It was an IP and resource acquisition. Mm. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Interesting. So they acquired and killed it? Um, we're just still no, going. no, no. So that's what allowed White Tracy to have such a big IP portfolio oh. in the thousands because it mm. was an IP acquisition. So they also um, acquired the licensees too. Okay. So wireless charging on the road probably not going to happen. You think it's going to be more the replacement for probably what like home charging might be? A replacement or complement complimentary like product where if you are buying a luxury vehicle and can afford the added cost, you know, maybe you'll do it. You think it, it so a luxury vehicle, but not necessarily, you think like a $20,000 Tesla that might be coming <laughs> to fruition. In the I mean, disclaimer, years. I'm like five years removed from that yeah, technology. Sure. But when I was there, um, the cost was not suitable for the affordable electric vehicle. And, and what's it is coming down? I was gonna say it's coming down, likely is what I would assume. But still, like, well, like, they were inventing the technology today. Now yeah. it's, it's smart commercialization and commodity. Right. Smart I, woman here. Right. I think um, if te- I mean if Tesla buys in, and I mean, yeah. Price will come down if Tesla has any. Yeah. With it, yeah. Think. Well, yeah. yeah it's they're... like any any new tech. I could, right? I like could assume that that's going to be an offering. And, They'll right? still make you pay mm-hmm. for it. It's not mm-hmm. coming with the car. So. Um, sh- not yet. It will. It should. You think it, it will? will? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, right. It, it's so all about that's, customer experience. That's a good. That's a good point. It's wireless charging is not an add-on to a vehicle. It has to be built into the chassis yeah. of the vehicle. Oh, mm. so there's like an entire, oh yeah, because of the coil and stuff, yeah. Right. Yeah, you mm-hmm. have a receiver coil right on ah. the other side. Right. Mm-hmm. Now, what is the, the downfall so then, of it? It's like heat and things like that. Sorry, Annie, go ahead. No, go, go. There is You're no good. heat. Um, at least, so, uh, Whitricity used um, a technology called magnetic resonance. There's no heat associated with wireless charging. It will heat up certain materials, mm-hmm. but inherently there is no heat circulating so compared to like my supercharger for my let's just talk cell phones okay cell phones you can plug in or you can wirelessly charge obviously when i plug my thing into a supercharger it gets a little warm this mm-hmm. thing yeah it always does well, it you gets, plug this into your uh mag safe any charger yeah, it gets like it gets warm no uh-huh. but any ch- if we're talking any charger then wouldn't a wireless charger make it warm so it's gonna it get does. it's gonna get warm but not it's like not the supercharger hot, hot or there's no heat. I've had to put my phone you know, down before. Flowing between the two. I, I almost had to like because we know get a company that out. makes a wireless charger for yeah like, locally that makes for products like this and the heat that's generated from that yeah. is yeah. Like, so it's a different. Is it minimal? 
It's a yeah, different it's a technology. Time, yeah. So that's inductive charging uh-huh. where there is no gap between right. the yeah, coil it's or it's touching, minimal, touching. Minimal, right? Minimal gap. It's like two millimeters, right, three millimeters. Right, right. Yeah. So obviously um, it's different for vehicles. It's, it's different. So mm-hmm. magnetic resonance is a different technology. So Qualcomm yeah. Halo was uh, inductive, right? Uh, um, okay. And they're operate, you're operating at different frequencies too there. Um, magnetic resonance is a slightly different technology. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Cool. So you're- so then, Hillary, how did you go from that then to spark charge? And is that was that the sequence of events? Yes, it was. So um, at the at the point where Tricity was at, it was a licensing company, and I was the person, and this is why I traveled. I was the person that did the technology mm-hmm. transfer. So I was a subject matter expert on it, right? Um, but I really wanted and felt I needed um, – productization experience and manufacturing experience. So that's why I found Spark Charge and I thought mm-hmm. that is the the next role for me. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's cool. And mm-hmm. uh I mean tell us a little bit more about how like that experience went like learning learning that manufacturing yeah, side of things yeah. and why that's also important with like since we're charging ahead mm-hmm. how that's going to play a role into expansion of charging networks and charging systems here at New because that's a big goal of ours is really providing the infrastructure and the ability to put out a system that can you know charge your vehicle to whatever it's willing to accept but as battery tech evolves here later on you know five mm-hmm. 10 15 years down the line why our system will not have to be upgraded yeah. compared mm-hmm. to everyone else that's already in the market that they're going to have to go out and replace systems and and do all that so yeah sorry that was really long yeah. but yeah elaborate okay. on like why or like how you learn some of that manufacturing piece but also why yeah. it excites you about what we're doing yeah yeah so at spark charge uh when i joined it i mean there was only a handful of us it was a very scrappy startup really at the beginning stages trying to make it and when you're resource limited like that a big lesson i learned at the very beginning is you have to be very forward thinking in order to save costs in the long run right Mm -hmm. so going to your Mm -hmm. your point about um not needing serious upgrades um and yeah just just not needing upgrades right things like putting the hooks into the technology, planning ahead when it comes to the design and thinking about all the use cases. Those are really important upfront decisions you have to make mm-hmm. when you're designing. So especially as a startup, because you can't do a never ending round of board spins, for example. And then at Spark Charge, mm-hmm. when I joined, it was the first product and it was during the pandemic too. So it was wild. Um, it was the first product they were ever putting out. Right. So um, I got to witness and be a part of standing up the manufacturing side from mm-hmm. the from scratch from the very beginning it was an empty cool. warehouse when i joined mm-hmm. and in the matter of months we stood it up and it, it was a full um assembly line right mm-hmm. um so having seen manufacturing sort of develop and become a fully functioning um line from the beginning to producing thousands right um i think that's super um I think it's something I can bring to the table when when we start producing our um, line of chargers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Absolutely. I mean, I think that's going to be huge. And we talk a lot about um, the product development process and really moving from R and D to commercialization. And mm-hmm. that manufacturing piece is going to be a huge deal as we move from these boxes and charging boxes that we're deploying mm-hmm. to ultimately the production intent pedestal, which is what you and the team are working on right now right yes yes absolutely it's gonna be it's gonna be a wild ride i think at the beginning but i think i've learned some really valuable lessons from the pain points um that we had at spark charge and how Mm -hmm. we fix them and i can apply them here so that's awesome so when you joined just out of context was that so obviously josh was on Shark Tank, right? Yeah, yeah. I had joined jo- Is it pre or post Shark Tank. Pre Shark, Shark Tank. Who? Yeah, Joshua Aviv. He was he was on Shark Tank and he pitched the idea of Spark Charge to the Sharks. Funding? Josh He's is their charged. CEO. He's oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he yeah. brought it all There's on the Shark a few Tank. Charging companies on Shark Tank. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. So I remember um, that's when I first found out about Spark Charge before we even met you, before I even right, like connected right. with you. Yeah. Season twelve, episode one, I believe. Wow. Yeah. Got it down. Oh my gosh! You just yeah. pull it out of the archives like that? Yeah. yeah. I've seen every episode, but there's a lot of them. You've so. seen every episode? Isn't it still going? Oh yeah. It is still going. Yeah. yeah, yeah still yeah, going. Yeah. yeah. Dang. Yeah. Um. He secured funding from Mark and Lori. And I made that demo. By Great. The way. Oh, Great. You made that demo? Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> we got a celebrity here, people. 
<laughs> no and joke. I'm in, I'm in the video uh, for all of like five seconds. Did you interact with Mark Cuban then? Uh, no, I did not. It was very, so, cause it was COVID, right? Mm -hmm. It was super closed doors. Um, if they left their hotel room um, in the two to three week quarantine period, they would have been kicked off. So it was, oh. they isolated oh, the wow. sharks so much to protect them. Mm -hmm. Gosh, I bet yeah. Mark was trying to get out of there like no one's business. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. that's super cool. So, so you, that's okay. cool. So you were there through multiple funding rounds, I assume? Yes. Yeah. So um, we were like very pre-Series A when I mm -hmm. joined. And um, yeah, I followed them through the start of, or was with them through the start of their B. Gotcha. Gotcha. Cool. So from someone, I mean, you see that model and what you guys are doing at Spark Charge as portable charging, right? Mm -hmm. Do you, do you think like, where do you, uh, this is, I guess, a question for both of you. Obviously, Mark, you have, you, don't want you, my you <laughs> <laughs> everyone in this room, we all, we obviously have a big picture vision of what we see the charging experience being. How, like, do you think like AAA is going to adopt something like a spark charge to their portfolio to be able to go out and charge people's stuff? Or do you think that's going to become more of a service-based business? And that's why I love the look that you're giving me because you're going to talk customer experience <laughs> around the brand, right? That's, a, that's what I'm well, assuming this is going to be included in more so actual than actual market size and like okay, viability go. product. But so I knock think it. in terms of like market size go. versus just, just regular charging, like going out and charging your car, AAA is an emergency roadside application, right? So those are em emergency use cases, not I need to go fill up the car type or fill up, right? Recharge the car type use cases. Okay. So, and, and AAA was and is, um, I think they're an investor and a customer of Spark Charge. So, I knew it. but that's not the same that. market segment as what we would be operating in, right? Okay. So, mm -hmm. Well, then, what's that market? Because that's all I think about is like, oh, no, what, my like battery is out. I'm on the side of the road in the desert and I have nowhere no. to go. I need AAA. Okay. Yes and no. We are the solution, so you don't have to call yeah, AAA. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's well. So right. Wait, you had your own service how vans often, that specifically hey, no, came no, out. No, 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 question: Like, what, how often you guys call AAA? I've called never. them like one time my whole I've life. Never yeah, I've them. never called them ever. Um, so there you I, have, go. I have work gloves in my truck if I need to do something. I just know what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> but like, uh, it, AAA has value, uh, but it's a it's a small niche customer. It's a segment of the market that. It, the other one outside of AAA, and it's not AAA, right? AAA is not always going to be the one that comes out. It's going to be your local A like, roadside service yeah. company, right, or whatever that's going to do it. And ultimately, the vehicle that they drive is going to have a battery pack in it, and it's probably not going to lug around. So you're saying V to V? Yeah, it's going to be vehicle to vehicle, like from that perspective. Like, and actually, uh, yeah, V to V, yes. Yeah. But the challenge with uh, operating with someone like AAA is they contract out mm -hmm. small mom and pops, and yeah. the hurdle is yeah. getting those people was getting those people to adopt the technology and invest and pay the technology. So well, and charge. then they would have yeah. to do the learning yeah, and yeah, development you're, behind you're it too, right? It onto a right. Of the market mm -hmm. that's out there, and they'd have to, and it's probably it has a relative cost to it, right? And you're yeah. talking about. I, I'm always reminded of the guy that one. Do you remember my truck? Yeah, like I lost the upper control arm. Yeah, and you had to go get and you had to go get towed <laughs> yeah, three so hours like, out of a mountain. Oh, it was way more than that. Well, but yeah. Tell the story a, no, for the a, for the viewers, correct. listeners, everyone, so, listen. Where was I? Uh, Camp Verde, right up north, northern Arizona, ish, ish. halfway, top of the mountain. Mm -hmm. I don't remember where we were going. Some lake up there. Sounds right? like a big mountain. Went over a cattle guard. Okay. Tire dropped down right to fill the hole. The knuckle came out of the upper control arm. The ball joint separated. Right, tire folds in. Knuckle Yikes. folds in. Everything does that. Top uh, of so um, with your two kids and your wife in the car too. Yeah, yeah everyone's in the car. Mm -hmm. um, Big family trip. Yeah, it was like a weekend thing that we would go do. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah. So the called the only guy that pulls vehicles off of these like back highway off-road dirt trail like was this like a roads. google search that you found this guy or how'd you find this guy i called the only tow service that was within 10 miles mm -hmm. and then he like pointed you to someone else no no he was just oh. happened to be the guy oh, okay uh, um mm -hmm. so called him 
Took him two plus hours to get up to where I was. Because he goes like five miles an hour. <laughs> up, right? Well, what's he driving? Like a class six? Yeah, big. Uh, like a Freightliner? Well, like a flatbed? 5,500 GMC. Mm-hmm. Like, truck mm-hmm. like a Kodiak? Like yeah, a big yeah, Kodiak a big with a flag? Or with a, um, yeah. So anyway, so, you know, loads the truck up, takes us down the mountain, and then takes us all the way back to the shop in Mesa. Because I dropped it there to our ah. headquarters, right? Um, that's a long trip, but anyways, the, the reason we're talking about it, right. Is he spent, he, we were talking about how many trucks does he have? Like what, how much does he spend on them? How does he make all his money? And this is a guy who, as we're coming down after this, like eight plus hour ordeal, he's taking his next job on the phone. So like he drops us off, goes down, grabs another truck and a camper, tows that all the way down to Yuma and he's already got a job lined up in Yuma that takes him all the way back Gosh. up. And his home is up in Camp Verde, like mm. that area. So, but he puts a hundred and I think he said around a hundred and thirty to hundred and forty thousand dollars into that truck. Oh yeah. He mm-hmm. had two more trucks that he bought used and he probably put forty or fifty thousand dollars into it. And they have to he has to run those things twenty four hours a day to make money off of it. So if you're gonna have these guys go out and buy something like a remote battery pack to charge that they're going to have to put on a truck and haul that thing around everywhere they go because they can't go pick it up, right? Imagine, think about yeah. that. He started there, ended here, picked his another job up here, went down to Yuma, picked a job up there and come back up. He's not going to go up to Camp Verde, pick that thing up and then come back down. Well, in today's right. infrastructure, he would have probably had to charge... So to make it viable, they would have to use that thing daily mm-hmm. for it yeah. to actually be like a financially viable solution for them. True. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'll go back to mm-hmm. my question. B2V. 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 Kind of like what we talked about. We, with R- we Rivian. talked we about talk- the Rivians. daisy chaining. Yeah, um, the Rivian not system. The in the Rivian thing, podcast. It, it, not the same thing. How, well, not the same well, thing. It's not in a depot, but it's well, very no, similar daisy concept. Well, daisy chaining was from a charging station. But either way, it could work either way, right? It's, um, it's the same concept, right? You could essentially jump someone's car. In a way or no? Kind of similar, yes. Have you seen the daisy chain? I have not. No. So Rivian came out with a daisy chain situation where you can park multiple. It was just a patent. Yeah, it's a patent. Yeah. It's not they like... They have built a yet. patent on like vehicle to vehicle, like you plug yeah. in here and you plug in here and you shove energy this way into the next vehicle. But I mean, it's kind of a ridiculous one because in a any vehicle that has an outlet in it, you could just plug yeah. it into the other vehicle and use the outlet yeah. charger to, to plug it in. So um, yeah, it'll actually be interesting to see if that patent gets issued. Yeah. So the reality is your customer segment isn't necessarily going to afford something like that to be able to make that a truly viable product for them to purchase. You're talking about the mobile charging. Yeah. This is your second week here. Yes. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Like why here and so far, like just give us your thoughts, raw thoughts. Yeah. So I, I mean, I think there's a lot of overlap between the two technologies from what I've worked with in the recent past Mm -hmm. to here, right? There's, like a fundamental overlap. Mm -hmm. And for a company who is looking to ramp up quickly in this, I feel like I'm the person to help do that. Mm -hmm. Um, Another thing that is, and that there are now a lot of studies on this is uh, charger reliability. It's a huge problem and nobody likes to talk about it and nobody does anything about Mm -hmm. it. I like the fact that we are going to own and operate our site and charger because I think that is the key to increasing reliability and this is a brand that will start to be associated with reliability Boom. yeah that is a big issue that's out there i mean what did victor say every single time he went to an ea <laughs> station or something like that it was like two or three out of the five were like he has no positive out. i think it's un- under 30 i think this is like uptime. yeah i would say i think this is like across the board i think there's more like wow. negative reviews on youtube than there is we, like yeah positive. we talk about this all the time yeah. right tesla's the only the only one that has figured out uptime yeah and you know i i think they will continue to remain high but once they open up the chargers to everybody i i'm interested to see if that uptime is still high is it yeah you think utilization is going to go up so therefore the i mean probability of fault goes up yes and we're in tear and then yeah. just um so Another thing I've noticed, and I don't know if y'all feel the same way, but a lot of Tesla users, they really understand the vehicle. They really understand 
you know, the charging, the newbies who are kind of they have iffy, no idea. Mm. right? Um, I think the probability I of, bought an eye pace because it's awesome, right? And the, I don't know anything about EVs. The probability yeah. of misuse might be higher too. No. I will never oh. forget the. I think I told you guys the story of the woman in a Kia. We were in, uh, uh, oh God, not quartzite. Just after that, um, we're looking at Blythe. The Blythe. Blythe. We're in Blythe. We're charging Zenda's Tesla. And this woman pulls up in a Kia with like two miles of range left. Wow. And she's like, how do I plug this in here? Oh, no. God. <laughs> she can't. She didn't understand it. And she's got like Google Maps open and she's trying to find like a charging station. The nearest one was five miles away. So um, I told her drive 10 to 15 miles an hour right till this station she had to get back on the i-10 to get to it 10 so to 15 miles an 10 hour to 15 miles an hour on the i-10 to go oh, oh gosh no. turn Min- off your ac definitely yeah. not following the 45 minimum but she she knew nothing she didn't understand the differences between standards she didn't understand like why it wouldn't work um she didn't know how to use it she did you know it, it's all these like complicated workflows mm-hmm. that we just need to solve yeah, and it's not I think I think you're right. I think like um, the expectation shouldn't be that people get smarter about EVs. It's just that the charging stations become agnostic and solve all these problems, so they don't have to worry about it. So no one should have to be educated on how to use it. You should just understand that, like the very simplest concept is like unplug this, plug this in here, like you do your phone. I mean, I don't think anyone taught me how to fill my car with gas. There's I think a big like you get your though. driver's license and you're like, okay, I'm just going to like watch the person next to me. What? Oh, look, yeah. I figured it out. Yeah. There's like a massive disconnect here from a generational perspective because if you ask people who are like my mom, <laughs> like I love my mom, but she would have no idea what she, to this point, she would have no idea what she's but doing. She barely same, has any idea same. what she's doing on her iPhone right now. Okay, I totally love you, mom. Different. I say yeah. that with love. But like, she can fill her car with gas. Yes. She can because that's all she's ever known. So make it simpler than that. So make it that easy. This yeah. is where, hey, and this comes back to what I was talking about yesterday. Spoiler alert, everybody. You're not going to have a cable coming out of a charger. I'm just saying it right now. I'm you Keep pushing that. I am pushing this idea because what makes What's your sense? Idea? You're not going to have a cable coming out of a charger. You're going to have a cable that's rolled up within your vehicle because there's more space available now. There's no gas oh, tank. Want the, I want, want the cord the to come to out of. I want yeah. I want the cord the to come out of your car on, on an unravel, and then you'd be able to hit a button and it goes back in. Because what's the point? Have well, we to let's let people sound off in the comments and see what they. Think I about I can't that wait idea. for well, that. I'm just saying, <laughs> if that's the case, we, we got to patent this. Um, utilization as it goes up then wear and tear interactions all that stuff goes up right so yeah. like you have to Absolutely. so why not just have a plug like your house where you plug the thing into it rather than have so pull it out that they can actually mm-hmm. go through well a plug that's right yeah. but wouldn't yeah. you rather yeah. replace the plug than replace an entire cord uh okay i feel like i sound smart but i might not be <laughs> 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 so you want the you want the highest wear and tear item um, that can accept the least number of cycles on the one thing that's going to experience the least number of cycles. So the least number of cycles in theory is actually going to be on the inlet side of the vehicle. And then the cable or connector mm-hmm. piece is the highest cycle count. Right. So, right? so like those two pieces, right? It, typically like the inlets, the, the female side of a plug, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that's going to be the the piece that you well okay if you're plugging into like a wall i feel like you're making my idea viable no nah, i can make it viable if i walk <laughs> through it like you want no moving parts on i'm the, starting on to the feel plug, smarter mm-hmm. right but you have moving parts in every outlet that's out there right you want no moving parts on that right you want like solid blocks basically and then the cable you want to have the moving parts because that's the piece that you replace but the question is do you want to replace a cable on a vehicle or a cable on a charging station? I'm going to say charging station. I think that well, it's a better users user are just experience. unreliable. You have to assume that they're going to be unreliable and they're not going to replace their cables the way they should. That's just the way that users operate usually. I think so. You're going to get your oil changed or and not? That, I don't remember. I am or, so overdue for an oil change. <laughs> and so am I. I was just going to say. I was just going to say. Yeah. I, I mean, retract like, my question. We have to assume it's going to be the worst user plugging into the charger at that point. 
right? So Hillary coming from, you know, Spark Charge and seeing all this and helping us move things forward. Where do you see like outside of megawatt charging being a viable thing as long as the batteries can take it and the vehicles can take it? Because right now, what's the highest rated vehicle on the market that can take, you know? 360 kilowatts, is that, I think is the peak. Is that currently. the Tesla semi or what's? Uh, Tesla uh, semi can take 700, right? Mm -mm, they say it can, 750, but we don't know for sure. That's the biggest charging station that's out there. Okay. But, okay, so with that being said, like, where do you see outside of, like, what we're trying to do and you being part of this with megawatt charging, like, innovation-wise, that needs to happen within this charging network that the U.S. is trying to build? Ooh, innovation-wise. What's the thing like, we're not doing? That what is the thing that we're, yeah, what, Ooh, what are we you not are doing? you me on the spot. Well, yeah. we ask tough questions here. Welcome <laughs> to new. <laughs> huh. we, we expect tough answers, too. Well, I'll table that for now. I'll, maybe we can come back to it. I'm going to think about it. But I think something that's not being done is standardizing the workforce for servicing these. Okay. Right? I like that. You don't have mm. to table it. We can keep talking about that for sure. Because mm -hmm. people aren't being trained on how to handle high voltage. Just how to serve what, what an uh, EV is. Right? I mean, I You're think. You're talking about maintenance and EVs in general. In EV charging. Yeah. In okay. general. Mm. Yeah. There is no standardization yeah. on that. Um, when you think about. Yeah, when you think about like an electrician, how an mm -hmm. electrician goes to school, right? I think the same sort of programs need to become available now for the people that are going to service this pieces of so trade of schools. Hardware. We have yeah. a contact with one of the trade schools here. We could start we to do. like develop a program. Offer a program, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's kind of like that's what the legacy idea. guys are doing in and a way, I think right? It, yeah, it would be really cool if we could own that too. Yes. Yeah. Ooh, don't, oh man. She's oh, stealing, you're speaking Mark's language. She's stealing some long-term <laughs> vision here. <Andy. laughs> no, I mean, trades are, is the, the biggest upcoming gap in the industry is actually trades. Like, so electricians, plumbers, like all those general, mm -hmm. like, traditional trades. Construction jobs, jobs yeah. All and that they're stuff. becoming more technical now. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So it's not just like, uh, you know, pulling wire. It's becoming a much more technical, much more computer digital centric mm -hmm. job, especially from an electrician standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a good point. It's now, true. back to the question though, of like what we're doing here at new mm -hmm. um, first week and a half, what's like the, if you could pick something that's kind of like the most interesting thing that mm -hmm. you've seen so far. The most interesting thing. Like what? What's the most exciting thing that? Well, I mean, saw? when you look at the pedestal and the sleekness of the design and the compact design, I think our ability to fit this much power into something like that and dispense it in a safe and elegant way, yeah, I think that that's what I'm most excited about. Um, producing this thing that will be the forward-facing image of our hardware. So. Spoiler alert, public! You guys have not seen the pedestal design yet, mm, it's but. Coming. It's not public. Is it public? Is it? it is we not. haven't. I don't think no. we've. Dis no, I'm we haven't debuted it. No. no. <laughs> everyone's <laughs> everyone's website? been no. looking at the box. <laughs> They've been looking at the big oh, box. Oh, you guys are gonna love it. Yeah, big See. box. But Hopefully pedestal big, is another level. Yeah, it is not supposed we to be have public. Not shared now, it. Making sure that it's not public, right? Well, don't it's show not, it. It's not. Ideal. But I'm not gonna show it. Don't show it's it. I mean, yes. for everyone listening. We will show it, and it's going to be freaking yeah, awesome, but not yet. Yeah. Stay tuned for that. <laughs> yes. But, yeah, it's cool. I mean, especially from a power perspective. I mean, yeah. that's huge, right, compared mm -hmm. to what else is out there in the market? Since we're talking power. Mm -hmm. Power. Right? So today it's 350, 300, 350 kilowatts, I think, for everybody else's station that's out there, except mm -hmm. the 750 kilowatt mega charger or whatever from Tesla. Mm -hmm. We're targeting megawatt 1.5 megawatts 4.5 right. megawatts right and the goal is to actually hit Ooh. that Ooh. Ooh. sorry so <laughs> almost do you think it's enough i know um for the short term but the goal is to build in hooks so that we can scale long term right so like and i think what i've noticed in this industry is what we think is long term is you wake up tomorrow and it's here like mm -hmm. you're surprised by how fast and shocked at how fast it's moved. So mm -hmm. I don't think that um, multiple megawatt charging is that far away. 
Well, I mean, we already know it's not. Yeah. Well, yeah, and especially for like really large applications like boats that are gonna like go hybrid or go electric. Like they're trying to put like the who is it the Fortescue yeah, guys? To make one. Fortescue guys that are making like big or. Yeah, they're making like the propulsion systems for like large shipyard boats. Yeah, awesome. I mean, those shipping have container been, boats. Like your typical cruise ship runs electric today. Like a lot of your uh, big ships, container ships, and stuff. Some of them run electric. Is today. it fully like fully electric? No, because though? it's diesel generator. Yeah, electric. Like running right? electric. So, like, yeah. The, the actual like propulsion mechanism is electric, um, and you're talking. 100,000 horsepower, right? And some of these things, it's just insanity. But for that to be fully electric, so say okay. going from going from England to, let's just say New York, we'll use a Titanic route without the icebergs. <laughs> uh, like a boat that's bringing goods and whatever like that, like what kind of battery would need to go in there? But then also like... I mean, obviously the battery size might not matter, Depends but what kind of, of but what kind of, mm-hmm. let's just yeah. say, let's just say a big, let's just <laughs> say an oil tanker, not even an oil tanker. That sounds totally counterintuitive. The irony of that would be. I know. <laughs> I'm totally uh, gonna, like figure this out. Now. But uh, yeah, so. just do like a shipping container boat and then like massive battery pack. Say it's got a, let's just say it's got. This is the craziest word problem. It, I've it ever sounds heard. crazy, but this is like what it, like they're trying to do this with my, like I think about the mining trucks. Cause like the mining trucks that they're trying to do with like Lieber and cat and all these other groups that are that's, trying to that's like electrify mine. Small, though, yeah. Like compared, compared to the boats, like, of course. And that's, but I like think about that and I'm like, well, what happens when they go to these large boats and they have these unbelievably large battery packs that one are going to be super heavy Two, like how, I mean, obviously it's not like they just put containers on the boat within an hour and they're ready to go. You know, they've got multiple days there, but say there is like a need to like get in and out within like eight hours or something like that. Like what kind of, is that going to be like a 10 megawatt or like a 20 megawatt charger? (laughs) Like I can only imagine like what the what the situation answer. is going to be. I'm, like, I'm, I, I just, I'm just throwing it out there right just to make conversation on this because, I mean, I just see that as part of the future too. Um, I mean... What, what do you got? 30 gigawatt hours. Wow. Of battery? Of, yeah, of energy to like potentially move that far. That's just like rough math. We're going to need some energy storage. <laughs> yeah. That's actually... No shit. You'd have to redesign would, a ship... Would that like shut to down the country? There. Yeah, it, it'd have to be built I think, I mean, from scratch with this. I would awesome. think even, yeah, like the there, entire construction of a boat to make it float would have to change, right? Yeah, everything, would, you can't like just plug some batteries in there, right, to do that. You'd have to completely change right. the, like, the architecture mm-hmm. of the boat and the construction and everything to make that possible. But that's couldn't roughly... You put the, couldn't you put the batteries in like the ballast bottom? Yeah, but that's what I mean. Like, you'd have to put it all in there, and you want it to sit low, right? You want stability. You want all yeah. this stuff. Mm-hmm. And since we're in this topic, we're going to get to charging around this thing for a second. But, like, yeah. when you think about it from that perspective, so what I say, 34, 30 gigawatt hours? Mm-hmm. And that's, like, stupid. That's a battery pack. By the way, that's probably not realistic. I just did, like, peak horsepower running f- across 3,500 miles at 8 miles an hour, right? Like, what's that going to take? So it's probably way less than that we we'll call it 10 gigawatt hours um it's only 3500 miles from you're not running england full to new york power it's 3500 30, or something damn i thought it was longer than that no um it's not horrible but you're doing it at like eight knots so you know it's kind of slow ah. um it's slow yeah very slow so wait you say eight knots eight knots dang yeah because yeah. okay 240 something yeah, 250 yeah. hours um, Yikes! So, eight knots. Call it ten thousand horsepower, right? So, like one tenth of what I said. So, three gigawatt hours of energy to to run across that, and then you have peak times and low times. So, call it five gigawatt hours of battery pack inside there. Um, okay. So that is going to add a substantial amount of mass to the boat. So then you're going to slow the boat down, and then it's going to haul less material but it's going to haul it using electricity but then let's get all the way to the end and we got to plug that thing in <laughs> and they turn one of these things around in what yeah. four hours mm-hmm. right wait so so i was wrong what 
I was saying I thought there's yes, like you were wrong. I thought there's like more. I thought there's like a it day or two. Than what you're talking yeah, I was saying I thought there was like a yeah. day or two no, between no, they, like a big container ship, right? They turn around in like four hours, something like Dang. that. Dang. Yeah. So those container crews who were putting containers just, on and yeah, off. Yeah, there's the a crew ready. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're just you're churning. Holy right, moly! You do this thing. I just so, have found a new respect for those people. Yeah, so then you're pushing, <laughs> let's, for easy math, let's just say four gigawatt hours, you're pushing one gigawatt per hour of what? energy. And we're talking like 4.5 megawatts, right? Or four megawatts. So that's like 25 <laughs> times higher. 250 mm-hmm. times So it's like the port in Seattle or the port in New York, that whole area is shut down. You want me to lift infrastructure. So going through all that. That's like, a big ass charger. So that's like a five gigawatt hour charger? What is that'd that? That'd be fucking awesome. Like, I no, can't it'd be tw- it'd be twenty five. Don't yeah. touch the prong ends on that Charger. sucker because you can get blown <laughs> right? to Pluto. Well, we're four, and you need basically one gigawatt hour. We're at megawatts. Let's call it four megawatts, right? So it's two hundred fifty. Two hundred fifty. Holy moly! How many volts does it take to incapacitate a human? <laughs> uh, nothing. You guys yeah. know. I know. Not you that guys, many. I would say it's you guys know this current. from it's the background. Current yeah, and waveform yeah. and mm-hmm. all that stuff. Yeah. But what is it's it though? Really, Annie, like really you've been shot by one, right? Yeah. yeah. You yeah. both have. Oh yeah. 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 I'm still yet to do yeah, this. Yeah, it's very low voltage. Yeah. That actually enters your body. It's the yeah. current. Yeah. How much current is it? Not much Very either. Low. It's yeah, like mm-hmm. tiny. Uh-uh. It's like milliamps. It's just the I can right. kill you. It can stop your heart. Mm-hmm. What? Yeah. No, it, yeah, but no. like it's, it's totally. You gotta be like in there to really. Yeah, 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 you gotta like. Yeah. Touch you know it. their backgrounds, no. right? <laughs> no, I don't. But... Oh, guys, oh, lay it down mechanical, real quick. Mechanical, but no, no, lay it down. No. Lay it down no, quick, what? right now. Taser. So Excellent. Mark and I both oh, right. worked at Taser. Yeah, yeah. She worked. She ran the consumer division. For Got Taser. it. Um, yep. Mark yeah. Yeah. We made all, the, all kinds of Mark made all the. Designed, yeah, twelve gauge little weapons and a bunch of other stuff for the weapons programs too. Like, yeah. Got Super cool cool tech. Yeah. yeah. On, on shocking. So, so back, back to this. Yeah. One gigawatt. <laughs> plug in charge. That's for a be, ship. Yeah, it's gonna be so cool though. That'd that be, will be cool. That'd be a massive I mean, battery. Talking, talking that would have about to be infrastructure. Site. Yeah. Figuring out how to have that in Ener- a location that would make sense Energy and not completely. Yeah, like huge amounts. You have to do that to. on site. Yeah. Maersk, Maersk executives, listen up. You're going to need a lot of Maersk. energy stores. <laughs> energy storage yeah. for going electric in the future. Just saying. Oh, that's, it's such a cool problem to solve, though. Like, you get good at yes. building batteries. You Love how your mind ticks. Like, this is so cool. Let's do it. Yeah, fuck yeah. Let's go. A poor. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out our CFO. Um, no, like it, it just, those are such interesting problems to solve. Like we talk about airplanes. We talk about oh, aviation. Yeah. We airplanes. talk about like all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah. Can, we, can we touch but, on that for a second? What? I want to talk about Evatol. Evatol because charging. because there's a lot of money being thrown into this right now. Well, yes. Archer like Archer just got another two hundred and some two hundred yeah. some million. The FAA is cool. the FAA is the one that's slowing all this down, obviously. But you can't be well, cer- you can't also, be throwing things I've, up in the air I've without heard certifications. From, from somebody that we know that Archer's not as far along as we think they are, but I think this person is also maybe a little biased. So, so I can tell you from an interview, <laughs> before I joined you, an interview that I had to run a charging division at an airplane company that nobody has airplane chargers right now. And I was talking one, to Adwin about this. This one company, yeah, we were, yeah. <laughs> yeah. this one company is on the forefront of, Who? I don't want to say who. I oh, you don't say. have to say the even token. Uh, I thought okay. you were saying like a charging no, company. No, no. Um, it's not a charging company. It's an aircraft company that oh, has yeah. a charging division that is who? even selling to customers beta. In, beta uh, Technologies? In Vermont. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So they're mm-hmm. UPS's partner. In, um, oh, yeah. They were yeah. FAA approved or Do about you, to get approved yeah. for cargo. Yeah. Do you remember that? Like, uh, I had a conversation with a charge the guy point there. or somebody showed off like their version of a aircraft charging not it was like giant like it was like the a guy p- walked out and it's like this huge yeah <laughs> yeah it's like you have to like two-handed into this thing and then you have to like i think it was a two oh, i do job. remember that yeah. yeah it was yeah um yeah but so, it's, a, it's a big gap i mean and yeah well and for, for what sure. they're trying to do but, because if they're trying to go and do 
like a 30 minute flight from like city city rooftop to say airport let's just say new york to newark like helicopter flight yeah well helicopter flight <laughs> whatever but to be able to go service multiple people say it's three four people at a time they're going to run out of a lot of energy real to, quick and they're not going to be able to charge fast enough to make that business model work you have to churn like very very quickly right? yeah yeah, yeah it's like exactly it's about the amount of people that you times can, a day that's yeah, how yeah yeah, yeah. It has to like run 24 7 and the yeah. only the only company i've seen outside of the u.s that's actually done anything to address this is that volocopter group because they made v ports they made their own v ports arm which is more or less sur like it's encompassing the cu the customer experience within the the port itself Oh, but yeah, they yeah, haven't yeah. really touched much on the charging aspect no, of it. No, and you're, I th you're talking about like they're building the, the site, right? Where yeah, where the pad yeah. where it lands and then yeah. you like you're waiting to get into it and yeah. all that stuff. But it so, doesn't doesn't touch on anything charging wise. And this is what I was talking about with Adwin. Yeah. With, with to make this a viable business model, you have to have not only the technology going into the vehicle that has to be able to accept massive amount of charging but you have to have the charging infrastructure to be able to support the ability to charge in like yeah. i think their threshold was like 20 minutes because, because you, they're not going to wow. turn it in 20 minutes. yeah and like, it's not going to happen but this goes back to um this goes back to the business model of the company all of these evital companies are trying to be like the next boeing or the next airbus mm -hmm. and the margins on those things like if you think about it if they screw mm -hmm. up they just don't make money right and they cancel a program um, and they're subsidized and there's like, like 12 or 13 out there. I think there's only going to be maybe three or four that will survive. Don't, like I just, I'm always going to go back to own the end customer and build the technology to get there and drive your cost as low as possible. Mm -hmm. Like if yeah. you want to be successful mm -hmm. and own it from like end to end. End to end. I think that's really important. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I'm always, yeah. So I I'm glad we touched on that because coming from an aviation happen. family, yeah, it's but like aviation, thinking about it, like what we're doing here, think about Deer Valley or the Mesa, Scottsdale, uh, sorry, Airport. Falcon Field, Scottsdale yep. Airport. That's all enthusiast private aircraft owners, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's not your commercial airline industry. Nope. And you're probably going to see some adoption in the private market faster than the airline industry for these like, hey, I'm going to like go up and fly around the valley for like, you know, for sure. Or an yeah, hour like an hour. Come back down. Mm -hmm. I mean, cool. it's just like uh, electric cars, right? Like, right. Consumers, enthusiasts, early adopters are going to start first, and then fast. commercial will follow. Yeah, it's like mm -hmm. my dad. He, I mean, we've got a Cessna 172, but I mean, the only reason why he doesn't take it out very often is because airline fuel just keeps rising. Yeah, but imagine if it's so expensive. Yeah, imagine if you like, if he's just like, hey, let's go for like, I don't know, at an hour, because that's a different than a VTOL, right? Like, mm -hmm. That's VTOL, a stall, that's a stall. Right. They call that's it. A, yeah, yeah, so like their flight time is significantly longer mm -hmm. than an EVTOL yep. aircraft, right? Mm -hmm. So that's your enthusiast. And right? as soon as they get up off the ground, I mean, it only takes like 60 miles an hour for that Cessna to get off the ground. Yeah. It's very light. So charging infrastructure for that market, and there's some great players <laughs> in that market too. Excuse me. That, that's a space, but, I will say it's a niche market and it's going to be slower. Sure. It is. Yeah. But I think it's, by the time it's ready, we will have a template for success with what we're trying to do yeah. now. Yeah. Cut and, and just, paste. yeah. Cut and paste. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just plug mm -hmm. it in there. I think That's it's going right. to be the same thing for like rail too. Yeah. Rail. Because we've talked to train, train groups before. Those guys, they're nine, <laughs> what was it? 9,000 engines a year. Oh my gosh. And they need 9,000 one megawatt hour batteries per yeah, year. Yeah, their they battery an, packs are just They gigantic. need an entire car, rail car of nothing but battery. Yeah, it's just nuts. It's Which exciting is, though. Yeah. yeah. What about like solid state and where that is going to fall? And what's your oh, opinion there? Boy. Uh oh, solid did state? I bring up something? I, I'm uh, interested in where you think that'll fall or if it's going to be a thing. Here's the uh, can of worms uh, that is it, it solid has, state. It, uh, <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? So here's the can of worms that oh, is gosh, solid state. Oh, gosh. Um, I, I mean, 80% of them are a joke, but... Uh, dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Solid state has <laughs> a possible future, but it has a ton of issues that are not solved yet. True. So it, it's there's all of these promises. However, 
no, solid state currently today has the exact same trade-offs that mm -hmm. like a liquid electrolyte, NMC, LFP, NMCA, NCA, LMFP, whatever it is, batteries have. And, but they use the same cathode, mm -hmm. right? So solid state is typically like a metal anode and a solid electrolyte and it's bonded together, but it's an NMC cathode, mm -hmm. right? Or an LFP cathode. Um, and solid state there's hype. Yes, there is, which is why I was asking because CES, it was all about showcasing there's that hype. Mm -hmm. But you have Toyota that's announcing that they're doing something. Actually, Neo just launched a car that's using a uh, solid state battery of some kind. Okay. Um, but it's not mass. Like, it's not producible. Yeah, no, it's mass not mass producible. market yet. Mm -hmm. So, gotcha. and Neo's car, I don't believe has any of the like solutions that everybody wants, which is well, and they're really big on swaps. Else. Yeah, they're swaps. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they're like. Are they the, still pitching that with the the solid state? They're yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they're opening swaps. swaps. They they keep yeah. doing yeah. swaps, swap openings all over Europe. I think that's like their main market right now, right? Somebody, I think it's Bjorn, the guy from Norway, just did a video where it's like pulling in a Neo that's towing a trailer and it does a swap and you like back out and keep going. Really? Um, a, a Neo that's pulling a trailer? Yeah, yeah. It's like a, it's, uh, it was towing with an EV but cheating with a swap or something like that. Mm -hmm. I have to look mm -hmm. at like the... Mm -hmm. uh, what was it towing? Hang on, a motorcycle? No, no. It's like a U-Haul trailer. Hang oh. on, I'll find it for you. Like a, um, the baby one? Yeah. You can imagine it being big. One. That sounds like a pain though. It swaps. Yeah. We've talked about this before. There it is. Like, well, I can't. So they're all uh, boxes, right? So the swap stations are all boxes. The, like you got to pull into this. Like see the thumbnail. Oh yeah. There's yeah. like plugging in, swapping. So yeah. So it's a box with like a roof over. Why can't it just be open? Why can't yeah. it just be like? Um, Send me the link. Why can't it just be like an open area with the the box next to you rather than you having to pull in and then pull out and then back out? Well, you, so how about how about just no swap? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think that's it. Too. Well, it doesn't solve the battery solve problem what's, exactly. whatsoever. Let's solve the battery problem. Let's build the infrastructure needed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Here's one. Well, it's ridiculous. Let's build the infrastructure because we've we know we can solve the battery problem, right? Like we've sort of like built the yeah. technology and stuff to do it, but the infrastructure doesn't exist to actually even make it a valuable right. asset. So let's build that. Yeah. So Hillary's got a lot of work to do. <laughs> yeah, no pressure. I'm excited though. I see it, it's possible. We're gonna get there and quickly, so. All right. I'm not scared. I like, I like the attitude. <laughs>